All right, hello, biology people. I'm here to address uh, what I call the cognitive demands. Uh, this is going to be an important framework uh, to kind of help get you thinking about the levels of knowledge that, that you have, that you can gain, that you will need to gain uh, throughout this semester in order to do well. So let me jump over here to this other screen. Okay, so again, uh, welcome to Biology 1306. Um, normally we would be face to face, uh, but this little video is going to be an online sort of example of how the 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 uploaded lectures will be. So uh, there's going to be times when you can't make it to class, maybe your work schedule, maybe you're not feeling well. Uh, in this day and age, you know, maybe someone you know, or maybe yourself, maybe me. Uh, we may end up uh, getting uh, COVID, hopefully not, and hopefully if we do, it, it doesn't affect us very well, very strongly. So um, basically, these recorded lectures are going to be in place to help us um, you know, stay safe, don't contaminate our other buddies, or if it's just convenient for you to watch these from home at your convenience, Maybe early, early morning, maybe late at night, you know, whatever the case is, right? So these are these are meant to be um, equitable types of replacements for being in the actual lecture room. So um, a couple of things I want to get into with basically with your semester. Um, 1306 typically is a very t uh, demanding course. You're going to invest a lot of time. And that's going to be something that you'll have to get pretty good at, right? You have to get good at managing your time. If, if you've maybe been on break, the transition from the winter break now back into the spring semester requires some adjustment. Uh, you got to budget your time. Um, if you work, that's another uh, big, you know, demand of your time. Your bosses don't necessarily care that you're taking classes. Your bosses require you to be there at work, be there being productive, and, and you know, they're may or may not work with your with your school schedule right life itself maybe you know family maybe you have little ones of your own that, that you know rely on you maybe brothers sisters maybe um, you know you share a vehicle or you know whatever the case right so life can sometimes make things complex so we have to strive for a type of balance here right uh, I know this is not the only course that you're taking, right? You're probably taking a couple of other courses, maybe science courses, math courses, you know, whatever the case. But each class will demand its own sort of uh, t uh, time on you. It will demand your own uh, budgeting of time. So keep that in consideration as you go forward in the semester, right? Uh, a lot of you like to have fun, and that's, that's necessary. You got to have fun. But again, it has to be within the balance of... Your, your, your daily sort of time, your, your spare time that you have. So this is important. Rest, right? In order to, to have a strong immune system, we have to be well rested, right? We have to be physically active. So these are two things that sometimes get diminished as we start our semester. And, and that can, again, also reduce our immune system. And this day and age right now where COVID is sort of running rampant, just to keep that in consideration, right? So the key word here is balance. A lot of you like to, you know, use your time to share with the community. And I do hope that continues, but again, in the context of balance and, and with you being the central character that maintains your, you know, your physical health, your mental health, that's going to be an important aspect this semester and throughout all of your academic careers. So uh, maintaining balance is important and also uh, a kind of taking in the material that, that you're that you're being taught not just in biology but in you know all your other courses as well so the idea of cognitive demands right so there's different levels of knowledge right it's knowledge but there's different depths of knowledge that you can gain so i suspect most of you are used to the idea of memorization right so memorizing memorizing and we would summarize that with the question what you know what uh, what is photosynthesis right that's something that you could give me a definition what is mitosis that's something you could just google a definition but that does not necessarily mean that you that you 
understand the concept, right? So again, different depths of knowledge, depths of depths of information. So uh, if you just challenge yourself to memorize this semester, you can say, yeah, you're gonna end up with a D or a C for the course. And maybe that's all you need, right? But I, I suspect most of you want to do well, you want to really gain knowledge to transfer to your next courses, to your allied health careers. So you can't just stop here, right? If I were to just memorize your names or you just memorize my name, you know my name, I know your name, uh, but that doesn't mean I know anything about you. I don't know what motivates you. I don't know what your goals are. So again, names are in the idea of memorization. Like in an, in an anatomy class, if you just memorize the bone, the femur, you memorize the bone, the biceps, biceps brachii, well, you memorize the name, but do you understand what that bone does, what that muscle does, how it functions, right? So again, very superficial type of knowledge. It's a starting point, but I hope you don't stay with that. So if all you do is take a highlighter and highlight bold words, or you take flashcards and just memorize little terms, you are stuck. You're at this very simplistic memorization level. And you may not get the grade that 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 uh, that you hope that you will get. Yeah. So throughout the semester, we will be learning how to analyze. We'll, we'll get practice at being analytical, and this is an important skill in science, in biology, uh, understanding how pieces fit together and how they uh, interact, and kind of is going to help us then apply concepts and make connections to bigger concepts. Right. So all of these blend together, but they are distinct. Biology 1306, I will tell you, is a memorization course. Uh, let me phrase that again. Biology 1306 is not a memorization course. Okay. Biology 1306 is not a memorization course. It is a conceptual course. So Biology 1306, we have to understand some concepts. If you try to memorize everything, it's just going to be too overwhelming. There's too many things to quote unquote memorize. But if you understand the concepts, understand the why, you know, it's going to really help you manage your time better and, and, and get a better understanding, a better comprehension of the material. I don't know if you've heard the term study smarter, not harder. It kind of goes with the idea. You don't want to just spend hours and hours memorizing. It's not really going to be conducive to a good grade. You can study for less time at a conceptual level and gain more out of that investment of time that you're putting in. So uh, connections, these are gonna be, um, you know, how do we apply then what we learn in chapter one to chapter two, in chapter two to chapter five? How do we connect the concepts that we learn in uh, biology and apply them to chemistry or chemistry into biology or chemistry into, uh, into politics and biology into medicine, that kind of stuff. These are the application of concepts. Procedures, investigations, this will come from two aspects, right? It'll come from our labster simulations and it'll come from the actual time we spend in lab. This is, again, a verb. We're gonna be performing, we're gonna be conducting, we're gonna be figuring out how, right? We're gonna use our hands, we're gonna use some uh, some of our technology and, and, and sort of go through the process of understanding how things work. Right? So a couple of ideas and, and different demands of your knowledge that, that are going to be asked uh, for this semester. So let's start off with this little kid here, right? So this little kid is holding up this sign here, right? So um, I don't know if you have experience with children, right? So let's say that little Johnny here, um, it's his third birthday, right? It, it's, uh, you know, happy birthday to you. It's his third birthday. And you ask little Johnny, little Johnny, how old are you? On his third birthday, I would bet a lot of money that he's going to do this, right? He's going to do that. Why? Why would little Johnny do that? Let's be, let's be a little bit analytical here. Let's analyze why would little Johnny do this on his third birthday, right? Well, I think a good, uh, uh, you know, a good hypothesis would be that, well, for a whole year, 
little Johnny would do this little symbol and people would, oh, he's so smart. He's so cute. They go pinch his cheeks. And, um, but little Johnny has seemed to have memorized this idea, right? He memorized this. He does this. Oh, he gets a lot of praise and attention, right? But does little Johnny truly understand that this represents something, right? One finger represents uh, 365 days since his birth. Another finger represents 365 days since his birth. I don't think he has that understanding, right? I don't think he does. I think he basically then would, uh, you know, figure that, you know, this just this thing that I do to get praise, right? I don't want you all to do that. Just have these uh, memorized types of, of of ideas, right? So I want you to understand what that means, right? So if he truly understood, on his third birthday, he would do the appropriate, you know, three, right? So don't just memorize, have a conceptual understanding of what this means. Now, if we look down here, I don't think that same symbol has the same conceptual sort of uh, idea, right? So it's a different concept of what this exact symbol and this exact symbol mean, right? So we have to then understand the concept, the context of, of what this is trying to imply. And this is gonna be an important skill that you have to grasp throughout the semester, right? So let's say as a, a person has an infection, we give them penicillin, right? It works, they're fine. Another person has the same infection, we give them the same medication, they have a terrible allergic reaction and then they're not fine, right? So we understand the concept, why did the same medication for the same condition cause very different effects? It's not something we can just memorize, give the same medication at all times to the same you know, condition. We have to analyze, we have to understand why some patients will have a particular allergy and some will not, right? So, so it goes deeper than just simple memorization. So uh, this thing's in the way here, but so if, if we analyze the idea here, so probably your knowledge will start with memorization. Your brain has been memorizing things since kindergarten. And you probably got away with that in, in, in middle school, in high school. Uh, you may not be able to get away with it in, in your science classes now at this level, right? So memorization is an important start. It helps us to gain the understanding of the concept, but it in a, in and of itself is not sufficient to, to stop there, right? So you notice a one-way arrow here. Memorization can help us understand the concept. Once we understand the concept, we don't need to memorize, right? So if you go back to your mathematics class, you know, I don't know if you learn math by memorizing two plus two equals four, two plus two equals four, two plus two equals four. I bet now you understand the concept of addition, right? So if you understand the concept of addition, you don't have to memorize every single little thing 234 plus 757 equals i bet you don't have that memorized but no problem because you can figure that out you understand the concept of addition right so once we understand the central idea the central core of uh, 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 sort of uh, demand this cognitive demand then we can apply it to analytical situations we can make concepts or we can apply the concepts to make connections to other ideas. We can take it to the lab and really, you know, dissect it out more. So again, the whole core idea of biology is to understand some of these very critical uh, concepts. Very, very crucial. So just to kind of give us an idea here, if we say, well, what is the, what animal is responsible for most human deaths each year? That's something what, right? That's something that can potentially be memorized, right? Maybe you've seen this somewhere, but uh, would it be sharks, venomous snakes, a hippopotamus, or humans, right? Which one of these animals, and again, humans are considered animals, right? But which animal is responsible for the most human deaths each year? Sharks, venomous snakes, hippopotamus, or hippopotami, I guess, uh, humans, or e, none of the above. Yeah, any ideas? Well, the correct answer then would be none of the above. Actually, sharks, only 10. 
venomous snakes 50,000, hippopotami 500, humans 475,000. But mosquitoes are uh, responsible, maybe not necessarily directly, but indirectly responsible for causing most human deaths each year, right? So we get into then the why, the concept, why, the, an the analytical idea, why uh, are mosquitoes so deadly, right? Well, we, we understand that they convey uh, many other secondary diseases. They're vectors for malaria, for dengue fever, for uh, West Nile virus, all that kind of mess. So again, we don't want to just get into the idea of what. What will give you a very uh, exaggerated, very um, overestimated idea of how much you actually know, right? So we don't want to get you in that idea there. So what is biology, right? What is biology? Tell me very confidently, tell me. Biology is the study of life, right? All right, well, is that something that you memorize? Do we understand what this means? Do we truly understand what the study of life is, right? Are we studying cereal for the rest of the semester? And if we're studying life, does that mean that, well, air, air is not alive. I guess air is not important. If, if all we're focusing on this very simplistic, memorized definition study of life, right? What about water? Water is not alive. So based on the simplistic definition, I guess we don't deal with water uh, in, in biology. Right? And I hope you're starting to see uh, life is this complex um, you know, phenomenon that does require non-living aspects to continue nourishing the life, right? Uh, inorganic vitamins and minerals, air, water, uh, non-living factors like viruses, like the COVID, right, are now having a, an impact on life. So the moral of the story, don't get overconfident just because you have memorized some little definition. That does not necessarily mean then that you have a true understanding of what's being asked of you, right? So that's the whole take-home message here. So uh, with that, I'm going to actually stop this little video. I'll have a second video that addresses in the hierarchy here. But uh, I hope this is making sense. I hope you're getting an, an understanding of, of, yes, biology is a complex course, but it's a conceptual course that you have to really start training your brain. And, and just like we train our muscles at the gym, we have to train our brain. We have to break out of old habits, uh, these uh uh, superficial memorization habits, right? And, and again, I'll, I'll give you a lot of practice throughout the semester, but it will require um, a, a shift in your in your learning perspective and, and, and this willingness to really change how you learn, right? Uh, but with that, I'll call it a, a lecture. So keep an eye out for the next hierarchy video as well.